You're watching Hidden Coast Surf Online, private surf coaching in Nassara, Costa Rica. For more details, please visit hiddencoastsurf.com. Hello everybody, welcome to Hidden Coast Online. I'm Ollie Davis and today we're going to be talking about angling at the takeoff. Now in the last video we talked about paddling into unbroken waves, so venturing from the white water out the back and start to catch green waves before they break. Now, if you can imagine, once you get practiced at this, okay, so imagine I'm sat out the back and I'm looking behind me, paddling into my unbroken wave, dropping, you know, popping up and dropping down the wave on my feet. People very quickly realize, okay, once I've, you know, now I've gotten to this point, I can very easily turn the board and start to actually point it down the line to start thinking about going left and right, okay? Rather than just straight down the wave into the beach where the, where the white water is going to arrive very quickly behind you. And so this is a really exciting part of surfing, actually. Um, <clears throat> once we start to surf down the line of the wave, um, we start to sort of lengthen the unbroken wave ride time and our speed starts to increase quite dramatically actually and I think everyone can relate, everyone who's done this before can remember the first time they actually successfully rode across the face of the wave rather than dropping down into the white water. Um, very, very fun time in surfing. So now it becomes relevant to kind of identify which way the wave is going to peel, okay? So what I've drawn here is what we call a left-hander. If you imagine you're stood on the beach and you're looking out to sea and you're looking at this wave, we call it a left-hander because from the point of view of the surfer, as they're paddling in, they're going to, you know, if you imagine I jump into this picture, as I'm paddling in, I'm looking to go off down the line to the left. And we know it's going to break left because the wave is starting to break here and then it diminishes to a smaller, less steep wave as we go off in this direction here. So it means the wave will peel in this direction. So typically what happens at this point is people get very comfortable with paddling into the wave, the unbroken wave, popping up to the feet and then turning the board to actually go down the line. And for the most part, this is, this is a really fun thing to do. Okay, so we paddle in here, we drop down to our feet and then turn the board and off we go down the line. Um, however, a lot of times this actually won't work. What will happen is we'll paddle into the wave, we'll pop up to our feet and we'll turn to go down the line, but in any situation where the wave is peeling quickly or we're taking off in a steep part of the wave, then very quickly that white water is going to extend past us and we're going to be left stuck down back in the white water, low down at the bottom of the wave. So the idea is we want to end up out on the open face of the wave, trimming down the line, okay? So what we're gonna be talking about today is getting around this problem of dropping down too low on the wave by putting in a step called angling the takeoff. Now the specific difference here is, what we're talking about here is paddling into the wave, standing up, and then turning down the line. Angling the takeoff is subtly different, but it is an important difference where what we do when we angle the takeoff is we paddle into the wave and then we start to angle the board and set the line, set the board going down the line of the wave and then we stand up after we've angled the takeoff. So the subtle difference between catching the wave, standing up and then turning versus catching the wave, angling and then standing up is a subtle but very big difference that means basically we end up successfully out on the open face of the wave more often especially when like we said the wave is faster or when we're taking off at a steep part of the wave it's also really important once you start riding a smaller shorter board because we need that wave to be steeper to actually paddle into it and get going down the line so once you can angle the board and start going down the line <coughs> we're suddenly achieving what most people imagine when they think of surfing okay a lot of people when they think of surfing is that just classic sort of cruising down the line, maybe on a longboard, maybe on a shortboard, but it's sort of that, um, it's the point in surfing where you really start to have fun with the wave. And like we said before, your speed increases hugely because we're taking a much more diagonal line to the beach rather than straight to the beach. And what this means is that we must go much faster in order to keep up with the overall pace of the wave. So the next pressing question is how do we angle our takeoff? We've talked about what it is and why it's important, but 
But now, how do we actually, what are the mechanics? What do we actually do in order to angle the board before we pop up? <clears throat> well, the answer to that is we're going to do three things as we're paddling into the wave. So I want you to imagine you're paddling into your wave, okay, and the unbroken wave starts to pick up, lift up the back of the board. And at that point, we want to start thinking about looking, paddling, and leaning off in the corresponding direction, okay? So behind me, I've drawn here a right-hander. Again, it's the surfer's right, okay? So looking towards the beach is going to be my right. So as the board starts to get picked up by the wave, we're going to look off down the line of the wave, okay? So you want to imagine you're looking somewhere like here. Imagine you're looking at the lip of the wave, maybe 10, 15 feet down the line. What we're then going to do is paddle in that direction. So rather than paddling towards the beach, this arm here is going to pull out and reach and pull water, not so much back, but underneath the board. And this arm is going to push water away. And really, just by looking, you tend to do that anyway automatically. But if we get into the mechanics of it, that's literally what we want to do. And then, as I've finished my last couple of paddles, and I know I've caught the wave, I'm going to bring my hand back and lean the board into the wave face. So that this rail here, okay, as the board comes around, this rail here is pushed into the wave face. And maybe with this arm here, I can pull and lift up the outside rail to make the board all the more stuck into the wave face. What will happen is the board will start to project itself down the line. So it's a balancing act where I want to keep the board roughly in the middle of the wave face like that. And then, as an afterthought, we want to start thinking about standing up. But the point I want to make here is it's really important, it's a very important distinction to angle your board first and then stand up. And an exercise I get a lot of our students to do is, and this is to kind of break out of that hasty need to stand up as soon as you've caught the wave. It's very common that people will paddle in and the first thing they think of is like, I want to stand up, I want to stand up yesterday, I want to stand up in 0.2 seconds. And what I get a lot of my students to do is paddle in and angle first, get that board, get that rail set in the wave face, and then just wait maybe one, two, three seconds and really just go down the line of the wave, lying down, and then pop up when they feel ready. What that does is it removes the urgency to pop up to your feet, okay? When people are doing the method where they're paddling in, popping up, and then going down the line, there is an urgency to stand up. We want to stand up before we get to the bottom of the wave, otherwise we kind of miss everything that's happening on the wave. So we want to pop up before we get down to the bottom. And so there is an urgency to get to our feet pretty quickly because we need to pop up and then turn. Once you start getting into angling the takeoff first, suddenly your pop-up can be much, much more relaxed. Okay, so for those of you with a slightly compromised or slower pop-up, that gives you a lot more time to get up to your feet. And those of you who just simply want to take your time and really make sure your feet land in the right place on the board, like we talked about in video one, this will give you much, much more time um, in order to do that. And so a quick couple of points and things that uh, can trip you up here. A lot of times we'll paddle in and we'll be looking down the line and then our hands will come back and we'll simply try and lean the rail into the wave face when the board is still pointing towards the beach. Now what happens is the board does start to turn but it's really slow, okay? What we want to do, the idea of the last couple of paddles being directional is that you help the board round the first 20 or 30 degrees power surges, um, first 20 or 30 degrees, so that you can then engage the rail in the wave face. Now what we're doing here, is if you imagine, if you're moving along a on a wave, it will appear like the water is coming up towards you and coming up the wave face. So in actual fact, it's stationary, the water's not going anywhere, but the wave is moving forwards. So you have this apparent flow of water shooting up the wave face, and what we want to do is get the rail perpendicular to that flow so we can stick it in and disrupt that flow and that's what gives you the lift. So if my board is dead straight to the beach and I dig my rail into the, the, um, the apparent flow coming up the wave face, not a lot happens. It will slowly start to turn but it's slow to the point where I'll probably just lose all my altitude on the wave and drop to the bottom. So what we're thinking about doing is paddling in and then the last couple of paddles help that board around 20-30 degrees and then you can engage the rail and the board will project off down the line, okay? 
And then lastly, I just want to make the point <coughs> that the initial method that we talked about where people are paddling in, standing up, and then turning their board to get on the line is not necessarily wrong, okay? Angling the takeoff before you stand or standing and then angling the board down the line, neither methods are right or wrong. They're basically just situation specific. So actually, I really quite like the method of when, you know, when longboarders paddle into a, a, a nice soft wave, they pop up to their feet and then they cruise off down the line. It looks very stylish and very cool, but unfortunately that method doesn't often work with a great uh, number of different waves. And so you're often left back in the white water as the video example shows now. So what we then go on to think about is, and the question that will naturally come up in your mind as well as you talk about, as you, as you try to do this, is as you're paddling into the wave, you think, well, okay, how much do I angle on any given wave and when do I initiate that angle? And that is going to be explained in a separate video because basically now the whole question is, now you know how to angle the takeoff and you've practiced it a few times, the whole question now is how much and when do I need to angle? So we're going to explain that in a whole separate video where you can start to think about the whole question of how much and when to really kind of fine tune your angle takeoff. And basically by getting the method right and then knowing how much and when to do it means that you will be going down the line a lot more often than if you were just using the um, initial method of standing up and then going off down the line alone. Okay, uh, so the next video we're going to talk about a little, in a bit more detail how we actually trim down the line and once we're standing and keeping the board in the middle of the wave face. Okay.